Ladies and gentlemen, the Raiders have not hit rock bottom yet. You may think we have, but we actually haven't. The Raiders' win streak has ended at the hands of Division II undrafted rookie quarterback Tyson Bajan. This is yet another record-breaking, humiliating loss in the Josh McDaniels Raiders era. As a Raiders fan, you either have to just shut the TV completely off or start enjoying the humiliation and have a little laugh. But the most important question for the rest of the season falls on Raiders owner Mark Davis. Will Mark Davis finally pull the plug on this guy? How can we, as fans, get this man the hell out of Vegas? Is it even possible? And honestly, most of us knew this was going to happen the entire time. Like and subscribe for more Raiders content. And look, a lot of people are blaming Devontae Adams, trying to hate on the guy because he dropped a pass, and this is after he had criticized the Raiders, criticized the offense, and I'm sorry, dude, I'm not gonna sit here and act like Devontae Adams is the freaking problem with the Raiders here. He could talk all the shit he wants to, and yes, he made one mistake finally for the first time in the 2023 season. Meanwhile, Josh McDaniels and the Raiders have loads and loads and loads of mistakes. And yes, there were other problems. Josh Jacobs, the ball, went off his hands and it ended in a pick early in the game. And towards the end, when the game, in my opinion, was pretty much over, Brian Hoyer did in fact do a freaking Brian Hoyer move and throw a pick six. And yes, the 38-year-old quarterback Brian Hoyer did have a bad game, but just like Greg Rosenthal is saying here, hey, even if the Raiders lose, you know, these are valuable reps in Brian Hoyer's development. <laughs> I mean, it's so sad, you just gotta laugh at this point. And that's the thing, we can isolate these single plays, we can try to make a stink about the defense, but if you're just gonna be real with yourself, and if you watch this entire game, the reason why they lost is because the offense just sucked, and the offense has sucked the entire freaking year. We had Mark taking a screen grab of the game right here. It says the Raiders offense, fewer than 20 offensive points in every freaking game this year. Add that to number seven, seven games this year with fewer than 20 points and it's the first team since the 2014 Jacksonville Jaguars led by Blake freaking Bortles. This is why Josh McDaniels pisses me off. This is why Josh McDaniels makes me drink at one o'clock in the afternoon. It's also because time and time again, I'm watching this guy maybe make a little comment saying, hey, I need to get better. But for the most part, he blames execution. And in this game, he started blaming the fact that he didn't have a starting quarterback. You know, that that's such is life in that regard. You know, when your when your starter is not available, you know, you're trying to make what you think is the best decision for the team. Again, I, I don't put this all on one person now. Let's make sure we make that clear. There's a lot of people uh, that can do a better job of what we did today. And I freaking called it. I freaking knew before the game even started that this was going to be a BS excuse. Oh, well, we're going to lose to the Bears, even though they have an undrafted free agent rookie quarterback from Division II football. We're going to lose to them because... We don't have Jimmy G. And a lot of people wanted Aiden O'Connell to start at quarterback. Would that have made a difference? If I'm going to be real with you guys, I don't, think it I, don't, I don't think it matters if we had Aaron Rodgers at quarterback at this point. But Josh McDaniels has asked about this and just said the most tone deaf thing. Yeah, but this isn't the preseason anymore. You know what I mean? We, 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 we had a, a, an entire week of practice in L.A., you know, or some most of the week, you know, we had an opportunity to practice them, um, you know, and there were some good things. And there was some other things that, you know, we needed to, to work on and fix and obviously get better and improve. So bro is trying to say this isn't preseason anymore. And that's why he didn't start Aiden O'Connell. I'm sorry, Josh McDaniels. Did you forget that you started Aiden O'Connell just a few weeks ago against the Los Angeles Chargers? If this is not preseason anymore, then why the f did you start him against the Chargers? Sorry for my language. And also, what is that going to do for Aiden O'Connell's confidence in the future? You're throwing the guy under the bus saying this isn't preseason anymore. That's why we went with Hoyer. And also, the quarterback is not the problem. The entire offense sucks. The locker room seems like it sucks. The Bears were playing with heart, and you could see that extra energy and passion from their players on the field. And quite frankly, I just did not see that from the Raiders. And it's because Josh McDaniels, I believe he's incompetent, and I don't think this guy inspires players. 
players. I don't think players are wanting to run through a wall for genius Josh McDaniels. And in the press conference afterwards, Vic Tafer is you know, remarking on the fact that Josh McDaniels disagreed with the suggestion that his team wasn't prepared. I'm sorry. When you get your ass whooped by the one in five bears, I don't give a shit who's on your team. You were unprepared. And if you're not unprepared, then what are you suggesting? Are you suggesting we need to just gut the whole roster again? Keep in mind, these are McDaniels guys. These are the players that he has chosen to join his team after having his hands on this roster for two weeks. We can no longer blame freaking Gruden for this roster. And what has Josh McDaniels done since he's taken over this roster, since he's taken over this team? Just ridiculous losses. Like we're not even getting into the blown double digit leads that happened last year. He literally freaking broke the record last year on blown double digit leads. But what happened last year is he lost a freaking Jeff Saturday in the Indianapolis Colts, a man who had only previously coached high school football. And then he also lost today, you know, to Tyson Badgett, D2 undrafted free agent quarterback. And imagine, just imagine if Justin Fields would have been in the game. Raiders already got their ass completely whooped. How much worse would it have been? And it's not like you're going up against the Jags like Derek Carr and the Saints did. You're going up against a team that's shitty and everybody thought was tanking. And some people hate Carr. Some people like Carr. That shit doesn't matter. That shit's in the past. Now, all fans are wondering of the Raiders. Everybody from whatever side you're on, you're thinking, when the hell are we getting rid of this guy? And you got Raider Post making a joke. Raider Nation's wondering what it's going to take for Mark Davis to fire Josh McDaniels. What are you waiting for, huh? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? This is a freaking horror show. This is a freaking nightmare. Raider Nation is screaming at the top of their lungs, wondering when is it going to end? And Hondo Carpenter, you had this guy, Sports Illustrated. He's usually really pro McDaniels and loves the guy, but even he cannot deny what is happening right in front of his eyes. This is the 24th game of the Josh McDaniels era in Las Vegas. They are no better than what he inherited, and it isn't even close. They are worse. And honestly, the Basaccia thing, okay, he's a special teams coach. I get why you don't want to do that. But man, we were just so much better in 2021. So much better with that team and all those players in that locker room. And I just don't get it. I don't understand how you add Devontae Adams to that team and somehow manage to make it worse. And Mark Davis, when will he make it stop? When will he make the pain end? This guy was hanging out before the game trying to show love to fans and do a little cheer and high five and whatnot and trying to be a positive owner here. But at a certain point, man, you you are getting paid. We know you are getting the bag. You know, you got your little dates at SoFi Stadium, at Allegiant Stadium. You're having a good time. But Raider Nation is not having a good time. And it makes a lot of people wonder, does Mark Davis even care if this is a successful football team, if this is a team that gets wins? Either way, the Raiders are worth over $6 billion. Mark Davis gets paid whether or not they win or lose. And I think the way to show that he really doesn't give a shit, the way to show that he does not care what happens to this team, Team, what happens to these fans is to continue to employ Josh McDaniels as the head coach. I know you're paying him 10 million a year. There's still two more years left on this contract after this year, but you have a franchise that's worth over $6 billion. You guys can afford to eat that money of $20 million to move on from this guy. And Mark Davis is hanging out doing a little dance after the WNBA had their victory. I'm sorry, Mark Davis. The WNBA does not pay your bills. The National Football League pays your bills, so I'm glad that you're having fun with the Las Vegas Aces. Shout out to them, but the Raiders need to be a winning franchise at some point, or everybody is going to stop blaming this head coach and start to look at this owner and start to look at him and say, hey, you're the guy pulling the strings. You're the guy making the decisions at the end of the day. And at this point, just like that meme was trying to highlight, what are we waiting for? What do you think is going to happen? The Raiders are three and four, but it's a shitty three and four. In the words of Devontae Adams, you could win a game and still look shitty. And that is what the Raiders have done when they defeated the Denver Broncos by one point, defeated the Patriots by like four points. And then yes, we're able to finally defeat the Packers, even though Jordan Love threw like three picks. This team is in shambles. Devontae Adams does not look happy with what's going on right now. He's hanging out, talking to Jimmy Garoppolo 
Garoppolo during the game and after the game, they take in the final minutes. They're looking out there in space. And I've seen these guys have some intimate conversations on the sideline. And I'm wondering, even Jimmy Garoppolo, like, look, I don't like Jimmy Garoppolo. Like, I don't think he's a great quarterback. I think he's okay. He's competent. But maybe even Jimmy Garoppolo is looking at Josh McDaniels and think that Josh McDaniels is holding them back. Look, Jimmy G threw three picks in that Steelers game. He has not had a game that shitty in a long time. You have to go all the way back to 2018 when the Niners played the Vikings for the last time that Jimmy G threw three picks in a game. So McDaniels is not only making the whole entire Raiders shitty, but the guy who he said is going to be his franchise QB, Jimmy Garoppolo, McDaniels is making him look worse. Call me tinfoil hat, but I get tripped out by this. Why out of nowhere, October 21st, did Schefter start telling us that there's no way Devontae Adams is going to be traded, even if he wants it. When you read the actual report, it says, even if Devontae Adams wants to be traded, he's not going to be traded. And so why do we make this point right before Chicago Bears game that everybody says the Raiders should win? And of course, the Raiders freaking blow it, blow it and completely humiliate themselves and their fans. Oh, but by the way, Devontae Adams is not going to be traded. We wanted to make sure we let you know that before the game, because deep down, it seems like they knew they were going to lose this game. And after Devontae Adams recent comments, they knew the trade rumors would spark right up after this L. And I also found it highly suspect that out of nowhere that same day, we got an injury update on Jimmy Garoppolo. Now I've been following the NFL for a long time. These injury updates always come late. They change at the last minute. You never get an update way in advance. And I thought this was so weird that Schefter was letting us know that Jimmy G's out for the Bears game, but is gonna play for Monday Night Football. I was thinking, dude, who cares about next week? I'm worried about this week and things can always change. Why are they letting us know ahead of time? It's almost like they were prepared to lose this game. They knew Tyson Bajant was going to carve them up and they wanted to make sure they had all their excuses ready. We got a backup quarterback, nothing we can do. Devontae Adams is unhappy, but don't worry, he's not going to be traded. We're going all in this year. And it goes back to Mark Davis and what are you waiting for? What do you think is going to change? Raiders are three and four right now, embarrassing losses. And do you really think, do you really believe the Raiders are going to turn it around and make the playoffs in the AFC? You really think that's going to happen? Happen this year and then next year okay and let's say the Raiders tank it let's say they get the first overall draft pick do you really think that Josh McDaniels getting a rookie quarterback whether it be Drake May Caleb Williams do you really think that's gonna solve all the Raiders problems right now is it really just one quarterback away from being to the promised land I call bullshit. I call bullshit on that. And I don't think having Josh McDaniels infect a young quarterback before they get going in the league is a good idea. I'm sorry. The Raiders were not one play away in this game. The Raiders were not just a few good calls by the ref away from having to win. The Raiders were absolutely embarrassed in this game by a shitty team. And you look at the schedule coming up. You got the Lions who just got freaking smacked by the Ravens. I'm pretty sure the Lions are going to want a big revenge game against the Raiders. And then you got the Giants, but then you got a streak of games where it's the freaking Jets, Dolphins, Chiefs. Wow. I wonder how that's going to go. And honestly, Raider Nation, make it nice and loud, which you want to happen to this team. Ultimately, it doesn't matter how we feel. It only matters how Mr. Mark Davis feels, but hopefully one day he listens to us. But if I'm going to tell you guys my personal opinion right here, right now, I don't think he's going to do it. I'm not convinced right now that Mark Davis cares whether or not this team is successful. I'm not convinced at all. And I think he's going to let Josh McDaniels play out the rest of his contract. If Mark Davis was serious about trying to save this team and move on from Josh McDaniels, I think he would have some players on the trade block and there would perhaps be some trades coming up. But unfortunately for us Raiders fans, I think we're stuck with genius Josh McDaniels. My name is Wi-Fi Willie. Peace out. And I hope you have a good one.